Hi, this is John Medved, the CEO of Our Crowd, and we're here today to review the highlights of our recent 2020 Global Investor Summit, which was really incredible. Today, we are experimenting with a new format, which is heavily uh, utilizing video. We feel that video is perhaps the best way to capture what actually happened at the summit, and we'll be providing today on this webinar, uh, over a dozen short clips of different speakers and different experiences at the summit. We'd love your feedback, by the way, on whether this format works. You'd like to see more of this, but we're giving it a, a shot. Now, we are going to hold questions until the end of this session. At the end of this, uh, this webinar, there will be an opportunity to be prompted to ask your, uh, uh, your questions. Please do, and then we'll address them uh, at that point. Um, as you can see by the stats, we uh, pulled off yet another uh, record-breaking summit. We had over 23,000 people registered, and we were particularly gratified that in the uh, context and the environment of the global coronavirus uh, crisis, we were able to bring thousands of people to Jerusalem and pull off the conference when many other conferences were being canceled. Uh, it was an incredible experience. And to give you just a, a sense of you know, what it was like, you can see some of these pictures. But I think the best way to get a real live sense is to take a clip, uh, which was just recently uh, uh, broadcast by CBN, which gives you a flavor of the summit. Our Crowd is an annual event that showcases Israel's innovations from medicine to agriculture and technology. The startups here at the Our Crowd Summit address a number of challenges facing the world, including the most pressing one of the day, the coronavirus. Sanitize uses nitric oxide to kill topical infections, including the coronavirus. All the stores are right out of all the hand sanitizer, so we have the gel, and it's a gel that releases nitric oxide, so if you put it on your hands, and I can show you, a, you take it like that and you put it on your hands and you rub it, all the bacteria, viruses, everything that I had is gone. That's it. So it works. Israel is now at the forefront and in the center of problem-solving technologies for the entire world. We know how to export solutions, and this really is the pinnacle of where we display that. At the summit, global investors meet Israeli innovators. This year, thousands of investors registered from more than 180 countries, and some came on what they call a tech pilgrimage. Investors even came from some of the Arab nations in the Middle East. They found companies like Edgybees that is helping fight the catastrophic fires in Australia and Alpha Tau that's developed a new technology called DART radiation that's curing cancer. The bottom line for our crowd is to change the world. They call it the double bottom line, making money while doing good. By 2020, they had $1.4 billion committed to funding startups while fighting fires in Australia, curing cancer, and combating the coronavirus. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, the Our Crowd Summit, Jerusalem. As in all startups, we start with a uh, address which I make every year about the state of the crowd. This year, I was particularly lucky that it was 2020, so we could look back a decade on the remarkable progress made both by the Israeli ecosystem and our crowd, as well as look forward and talk about how our companies are really addressing some of the major crises today. So let's hear that parts of that state of the crowd address. When you look at what happened over this last decade, there was exponential growth, both in Israel and the ecosystem, as well as here at our crowd. We went from a little over $2 billion invested in 2010 to over $8 billion invested in 2019, growth of 400%. We went from 2.6 billion in exit value to almost 22 billion in exit value. At the beginning of the decade, Israel finally was admitted into the OECD. Today, we're ranked number one in entrepreneurship by the World Economic Forum. At our crowd, we launched in 2013. Today, in 19, we celebrate, or just last year, celebrate 
our partnership with Stiefel. We had 24 million in commitments, funding commitments back in 2013, and now we celebrate the fact that we have $1.4 billion in commitments. We had 2,400 investors, and we now have over 42,000 signed up on our platform. We didn't have exits in 2013, and now we have 36 and counting. When you look at how this looks in terms of the capital raising, this is incredible. For any company, this would be amazing. But this is an ecosystem which is growing this way. And you look at the exit value, you see these mega exits like Mobileye for $15 billion two years ago, or NVIDIA just last year for $7 billion, and there is a lot more coming. When you look at our growth at our crowd, it's been steady to the 42,000, but we want to take this to 400,000 and 4 million, I dare say, if we can get there in the next decade. Our commitments have been growing dramatically, and based on what I've seen in the last day or two and what's gonna happen today, we're going to be committing a lot more funding to these incredible companies. Last year, again, we were Israel's most active venture capital investor. And that's great because it was done democratically. You are the ones who became Israel's most active venture capital investor. 38 new companies. That's unbelievable. Give yourselves a real round of applause. Most venture capital funds are happy and proud to have 12 companies, 15 companies, 20. To invest in 38 in one year is incredible. We signed the strategic partnership with Stiefel, who is the seventh largest broker dealer in the United States. They're going to be distributing our products to their one million clients, so we're gonna get a lot more investors into venture capital here. And they are also going to be helping our companies with investment banking. We'll hear from the CEO of Stiefel, Ron Krzyzewski, later on. Now, our companies are on the front lines. They're dealing with the coronavirus, they're fighting fires in Australia, they're keeping us safe from missiles. These are our companies at work. And in particular, we're very proud of our cluster of companies who are fighting cancer. Companies like Barcode, who are giving personalized chemo by essentially barcoding candidates which you get injected and then tested to know what works for you. Companies like AlphaTau, that shoots you with a radioactive dart, and literally in their first clinical trials, 100% of the tumors shrunk, and 79% were totally wiped out. Companies like Incitec, yes, that deserves applause. Companies like Incitec, who are crossing the blood-brain barrier by using focused ultrasound to deliver important medicine to destroy glioblastomas. Companies like HIL who are taking critical proton beam therapy and reducing it from a giant linear accelerator that takes a football field to a desktop which uses advanced lasers and nano targets. These are companies that are indeed on the front lines. But we're also fighting the coronavirus and our companies like MeMed are developing instantaneous testing to determine whether it's a bacterial or a viral infection. It's one of the few companies where the US and China are cooperating unbelievably well. The US Department of Defense is a big funder of the company, as well as Ping An from China. Site diagnostics, again, proving that the dream of pinprick, single, double drop of blood can give you great complete blood count, and you'll hear about that company. Companies like VocalZoom, and by the way, what they're doing for the coronavirus is they're allowing that point of care CBC testing to go on in quarantine so that you don't need to take the blood from the potential patients and move them into uh, uh, the general blood supply. Sanitize, who's got a great antiviral, antibacteria, and VocalZoom who's developing sensors for airports. We want you to engage. 
We want you to listen, but then act. We need to do this together. This whole platform is built on your active participation. And it's not just writing a check, which we need you to do, but it's about helping these companies. It's about making an introduction for a distribution agreement somewhere in the world, about finding a key hire for the company, about making sure that more medical centers like Stanford are using our groundbreaking technology. It's that force multiplier, the power of this crowd that will allow our companies to go forward and to save more RE elements. Have an incredible day. Thank you very much. We were very, very lucky to have with us on the summit stage Saul Singer, the author, co-author of Startup Nation. Turns out that the book Startup Nation was published in November 2009. So literally, it's 10 years to the Startup Nation. Saul shared with us some of his views, and in particular, wonderful reference to his late father, who just passed away. We were very, very grateful to have Saul on stage with us. Let's hear from him now. Israelis like impossible problems, and you really see that here today. You know, people ask me, what's happened over the last 10 years? And I wish they could just walk in this room. I wish they could just walk in this building and see what's happening. I mean, this, this is, you know, if I could imagine what Startup Nation actually looks and feels like, this is it. <laughs> and John, I, I can't think of anyone right now who's doing more to build Startup Nation. I, I just wrote the story. The hard part is the building, and that's what you guys are doing here. Over the last 10 years, the world's changed a lot. Back then, Israel and Silicon Valley were basically the two large, diverse ecosystems in the world. That was about it. Since then, you have big ecosystems in Delhi, in Beijing, in London, in New York, in Berlin, Paris. I've seen startups in Ho Chi Minh City, in Medellin, Colombia, in Nairobi, everywhere I go. And this is amazing. It's an amazing opportunity for Israel. But, you know, in this kind of world, what's different about Israel? What's still different? Well, we have a lot of weaknesses, but actually those weaknesses are also our strengths. We like to argue. We like to debate. We're loud. We're stubborn. We're impatient. We have no respect for authority. It's great to work with us. <laughs> but all these things are great for doing startups. Um, but we're also driven, and this is the key thing, is that we have a word in Hebrew that doesn't exist in English. It's called misimatiut. Misimatiut. It means mission-oriented. Israelis know what a mission is. It's something that's not about if, it's only about how. And I'm amazed as I talk to the startups today, what they take on. I mean, Israelis like impossible problems, and you really see that here today. We can start solving these huge problems in the world together. In fact, if we combine our strengths, we can take on these tough challenges, and we can solve them. Let's build a future together. Thank you. Uh, one of the challenges of pulling off the summit this year was the fact that we had hundreds of cancellations of friends and sponsors and companies who were coming from China, as well as some of the other Asian countries. Many of them tied into the summit through our live stream which had uh, an enormous response this year, and literally people from over 100 countries signed up with the live stream. But in particular, we actually had readings at the summit from uh, Jitri, which is one of China's largest research institutes with 6,000 researchers 
and they were one of the conference sponsors and sent special greetings from China for the R Crowd Summit. Let's listen in. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, on behalf of G2, I would like to express my warmest congratulations to the opening of Global Investor Summit. As you know, China is fighting with this coronavirus with the help from the international community. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the friends around the world, especially our friends from Israel, for your great help and support to China when we are facing this big challenge. From my first trip to Israel last year, I attended a lecture made by Mr. John Medved, CEO of the All Crowd. And he said, four crises or four big challenges in Israel made the today's glory for Israel. Like the people in Israel, the Chinese people are never been afraid of the challenges since we take the challenges as a great opportunities for further development. I really like the term of this summit. Stop. Go beyond. For startup companies, going beyond is not only for having new technology, new mode of the business, but also for overcoming the geographic, religions, culture, and the political restrictions in order to enter into the global market. As we know, many startups from Israel are used to looking for investments and markets in US and Europe. G2 as a bridge linking the global innovations to China. As you know, the R Crowd Summit is not just a one-day event. There are many, many events that go on through the entire summit week. We had 600 people engaged in what we call tech tours that went to the north, the south, into Jerusalem. We had cocktail parties, the launch of Stiefel's new office. We had a, a wonderful gala dinner at the uh, Israel Museum. There was just so much going on. But in particular, one of the key focuses of Summit Week is what we call the pre-summit or the leaders forum. It takes place the day before. This year we had 1,200 people and we were very fortunate to have Shlomo Dovrat, who runs the Viola Group, which is Israel's largest uh, venture capital organization, about $3 billion under management, address the global environment and what's going on, and in particular, what's required for the next generation of AI-driven startups. Let's listen in. We are now at the beginning of a new innovation age. Artificial intelligence, I believe, is at the core of this new age of machines that will redefine everything and every industry and every aspect of our life. So let's talk about globalization. In the early 90s, something dramatic happened in the world. China opened up, Asia opened up, global trade has peaked dramatically, uh, the Iron Curtain fell down, uh, the Soviet Union uh, you know, ceases to exist, and the result was that we have now become a, a really, truly global uh, village. And we can see it very well in this corona crisis, where every industry, every consumer is impacted by what's happening in China, in Vietnam, in everywhere else in the world. We have become a global village. The result of that have been phenomenal. We've, we've seen economic boom, and if you don't read the news, but you actually read the economic data, this is the best economic times human man, humankind has ever experienced, by far. You know, startups, are, as we know them today, are being redefined. We are talking about companies that are not selling tech, but they need to develop and offer a complete service based on technology. Execution becomes a major issue. This is no longer about a couple of nerds coming from Stanford or from 8200 developing this amazing cyber technology and, and building a unicorn. That doesn't work anymore. This is yesterday's news. Uh, I think it requires a much broader team. We need experience in marketing, in sales, in data science, in finance, in operation. We are not looking anymore for only that technology excellence. This is not enough. 
and it does require a larger upfront investment. What really uh, AI is dealing with is not only dealing with massive amount, unlimited amount of self-defining data, so the end of database, welcome big data, but also dealing with nonlinear logic, which means rather than saying if then else, you know, the AI technology can absorb huge amounts of data and make their own conclusion. The change is huge. It is changing the way computing. We need quantum computing, we need biological computing, we need s uh, dedicated chips that will think differently. We need software platforms. I don't want to go into all of that, but the whole innovation stack this will look like a very new innovation stack in the, next, uh, uh, in the next decade. This is what will define innovation in the decade to come. As in every year, we put on the stage leaders of the Israeli tech ecosystem. And there's probably no more important group in Israel than the Israel Innovation Authority, which provides government funding for not only incubators, such as our crowd's four incubators here, but also for many, many startups, what used to be called the Office of the Chief Scientist. The new leadership of the Innovation Authority is led by Aaron Aaron, who used to run Apple's R&D activity here, and he was talking about the decade ahead and what we need to do as an Israeli ecosystem to show and continue the kind of growth that we've had over the past decade. Let's hear from him. So Herzl wrote that the word impossible has ceased to exist for our men of science. I believe that this was the foundation of what we have as of today. Now, the question is about the future. What will be the next 10 years? So we believe it will be an innovation-based economy. So not only scale-up nation, but innovation-based economy. But in order to be so, we have to look at four pillars. First of all, the technology aspect. So that's what we believe. We have to be national leadership in AI technology and applications. So that's number one. The second one, if we are talking about sectorial aspect, the future health tech is going to be bioconvergence and we have to push it, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So that's number two. Number three, if we're talking about geography and demography of Israel, we have to include, to have inclusion and diversity of the high tech. Today, it's not the case that I'm going to present. And the last one, of course, the depth aspect, is to assimilate the technology that we have in the high tech in our lives. This year, we were very, very fortunate to talk not just about large tech trends, but to bring the impact of many of our companies down to a quite human level. Uh, we shared the stories of three patients whose lives have been affected by three different R Crowd companies. Let's hear some of these stories right now. Three patients whose lives have been affected and saved from three different companies. Tests revealed a life-threatening tumor growing deep at the base of Ari's brain. Using that 3D model, which included the tumor and the surrounding vessels, surgeons were able to spend hours practicing the procedure. Now, months after this groundbreaking operation, a miraculous recovery. If you practice well, you're gonna be successful. And I think that this is what uh, gave our neurosurgeons the ability to really practice very well and increase the chances for Ari's uh, success. So thank you, Surgical Theater. Unfortunately, we went to, when she went to the doctor and had a biopsy, they discovered it was cancerous. And then over time, she found multiple lesions on her cheek. She was speaking with a friend who had heard of the trial that we were doing for the Alpha Dart product which actually was a good fit for her type of cancer. ומאז אני כל בוקר אומרת תודה רבה לחברה אלפא טאו על הצלה כזאת גדולה שהם הצילו אותי מניתוח וטיפול שאחרי שנתיים עדיין עובד וימשיך לעבוד. I was that patient who couldn't hold anything in my hands. I could not write. I could not drink a cup of coffee. I spilled things continuously. I was very handicapped. I've had a central tremor for most of my adult life. It's gotten increasingly worse. 
four weeks ago, I had the Incitec procedure. I was released from the hospital the next day, and I had regained the use of my left hand, my dominant left hand. So I am grateful to Incitec, to Maury Blumenfeld, to our crowd for making this technology possible. You are doing great things here. Thank you very much. I mean, thank you. One of the new formats we tried out this year was something we called the High Tech Horror Show. And we came up with this before the coronavirus had hit the world. And literally, uh, we have some rather horrific things that are happening out there. And we were talking about them. And in particular, uh, one of the interesting companies on the stage of this High Tech Horror Show uh, was presented by a Nobel Prize winner, uh, Farid Murad from Sanotize, who are fighting the coronavirus, among others, uh, other maladies. So let's uh, listen in to uh, what Sanitize is doing. Microorganisms are very clever. They replicate quite rapidly, and they adapt to their environment. Viruses need intact cells to reproduce, to use the machinery of that cell. And as the environment changes with exposure to antibiotics to kill them, they adapt and survive and they become resistant. Antibiotics are used so freely now by the farmers with chickens and pigs and cows and even in patients. And we develop these superbugs that are resistant to all of our present antibiotics. And you can incorporate this molecule as a new approach to treat infections. Sanitize has developed a formulation that can be delivered as a, as, a, as a nasal spray, a liquid, a gel, a cream that can kill all these bugs. And I'll show you a few little samples and promise not to get too much into the science. Take bacteria, drug resistant, three types of drug resistant bacteria within five to 10 minutes, complete kill from a very high concentration of bacteria to zero. Other big threat we're talking about these days, I don't have to say much about it, is the pandemic. So how do we deal with that? This is, again, lab experiments where we show how we take influenza, H1N1, different types of influenza, and we get complete kill within minutes with just the liquid, the nasal spray that we're using. Each year at the summit, we provide what's called demo theater, which is an attempt to actually demo real company solutions in a theater format. We get over a thousand people in this hall. And this year, like all other years, there were a lot of exciting companies. Let's see what Ride Vision, who is building a mobile eye like solution for motorcycles, is doing. Uh, Ride Vision develops a collision avoidance technology for motorbikes. Motorbikes accounting for almost 400,000 fatalities a year. Now, the alerts have been de delivered in two ways. First is audio alerts delivered via Bluetooth to the helmet of the biker, only at the critical sections. In addition, we have visual al alerts that have been delivered to the biker as well. You can see here small additions, small LED additions that have been put on the mirror. This is skipping. He will continue to, uh, to advance. And at that point, a forward collision will fire by blinking very, very fast, and the audio cue will be raised to the helmet. What I want to show you now is how he maneuvers between the traffic. So look at that, that's the unique pattern we're talking about. And there are no alerts here because despite that that looks quite dangerous, there's a clear trajectory for the bike to pass. And that's exactly what Ride Vision does. We understand that predictive trajectory and based on that we generate the alerts. The riding in congested environment is bicycles and scooters. And that's the same set of algorithms that Ride Vision uses to address the same problems. At the summit, most of the activity happens inside the building. But this year, in particular, there was a lot of action outside. We had many, many companies who were, in particular, demonstrating their unique mobile solutions. One of them was Innoviz. And we're going to go along now for a drive-through with Innoviz, who was pioneering LiDAR, which is laser radar for the next generation of autonomous driving vehicles. So un unless you can provide redundancy by another sensor, a dr driver must be uh, alerted 
and, and take control of the car if something happens. And the only way today, uh, in order to do this, you need to provide a LiDAR. Radar is unable to do it. Uh, the problem with LiDARs, as you probably know, is uh, you know it's very expensive, it's not reliable, and then, you know, just too too large, etc. So, you know, Innovis is developing this sensor, and you, know, you can you can hold this in your hand. It's very small, and it's going to be much cheaper than the existing ones. We're targeting sub 1000 at the beginning. So, so it's not 360. It's no, it's it's a solid state. It's like a web camera. I right. mean, in a sense, it's embed. It, it's going to be embedded uh, in the car. It's what? not on the roof, so it's more. It's only front looking. Also, uh, level three uh, means that it's uh, only highway driving. Okay. Uh, once you want to go to level four and five, yes, you need to have um, you know 360 coverage, and you can do that by putting uh, several sensors which are seamless in the car because uh -huh. they're not on the roof and get uh, the, the full coverage around the car. By the way, today is the first day we're showing this uh, technology live. Many of you have heard about our crowd's recent deal with Stiefel, who is one of the largest investment banks in the United States. Stiefel's chairman and CEO, Ron Kruszewski, came to the summit and provided one of the highlights in his discussion of the partnership between Stiefel and our crowd, and a little bit about his remarkable personal journey from the uh, being the uh, son of a, of a fireman to the uh, CEO of a multi-billion dollar company. Let's uh, hear from Ron Krzyzewski now. I've been CEO of Stiefel for 22 years, and I cannot believe it took me 22 years to find my way to Startup Nation here. This is amazing, and we're we're hitching our wagon to you and Israel here. The markets have changed, and that money is being made much earlier and much faster because of disruption and innovation. And so uh, I think all of you in this room get it because you're here. We want in the United States to be a firm that leads and is a leader in democratizing investing in private companies for the average investor. And that's what our crowd does. I, I met John in August in New York. I, I had met him 15 minutes and I said, I'm in. We made that investment by October. Yeah. We were an investor in our crowd right. by October. Well, I, know, I know Chairman Clayton and I know that what he says is, is what he believes. And I think it's what our crowd is trying to do. The ordinary investor needs the opportunity to invest in the companies that I've that I've saw today. We just opened an office here uh, in the last couple of months, and uh, when I see what's going on here, uh, we're going to be successful with you. We're, we're attaching our, we're going with you. Each year at Summit, we are blessed with speakers and leaders of tech companies from all over the world. And in particular, given the situation, we were very uh, grateful this year that the CEO of NTT, which is Japan's largest technology company, a hundred billion dollar, uh, huge, wonderful company, uh, Jun Suwada or Suwada-san came to the summit and actually presented a new approach called ION, which is a new communications paradigm. He also talked about increasing NTT's commitment to investment in Israel as part of an overall trend showing more Japanese involvement in Israel. Suwada-san's own video, by the way, has now gone viral on the net and has close to 3 million views. But this is now a little bit of our own video about Suwada-san's contribution. By the way, into uh, Israel and Japan relationships going uh, extending, especially in these seven years, center over this uh, diagram, investment 25 times jump up in these seven years. My first visit to Israel the 20 years ago, I had an investment one a uh, startup company. I met the CEO him in yesterday. Very exciting. I want to again to extend our good collaboration with uh, Israel. Not only Israel in the world is a new startup company. 
My company is not so big investment in the past, only for 20 million, but uh, we can extend especially for 5G or energy or life science and robot AI generative designing, those type of a new domain is welcome to us. We have already prepared the corporate uh, venture capital is uh, more than one billion US dollar. And we want to continue to uh, the, so such uh, activities with you. I want to back to the, our basic concept. We won't be uh, your value partner. The summit always makes headlines, and often it's about technology. Sometimes it's about even bigger matters, such as regional cooperation. And we were very privileged to have speaking on the summit stage uh, Jason Greenblatt, who was the special envoy of the President of the United States for the peace process in our region. And Jason was talking about how you can tackle impossible tasks and in particular, the importance of economic ties in terms of making peace in this region. Jason Greenblatt had a very important message for us all. It's a pleasure to see so many friends here participating in this exciting event, one of the largest of its type in the world. Today, I wanted to talk to you about tackling impossible problems. As some of you might know, over the past nearly three years, I worked on what many would describe as an impossible problem. But we have to remember that humanity has managed time and again to overcome impossible problems. In fact, the constant progress of invention and technology is the most significant power moving humanity into a sustainable and brighter future. I went to Ramallah and met with young Palestinian tech entrepreneurs. One of them said something to me that I will never forget. Jason, help us Palestinians learn to build and sell our own mobilize. That request stayed with That request stayed with me each and every day of my nearly three years at the White House as I worked on peace between Israel and the Palestinians and Israel and its Arab neighbors. The miracle of the startup nation, the disproportionate amount of disruptive technologies and wealth creation events that come out of Israel is to be admired but also studied. I hope to continue building relationships between Israel and its neighbors in the region to work on what once seemed impossible, building together an economic bridge of peace. Israel and its neighbors working together on investments, innovation, and technology can together provide a potent new energy to the entire region. Let us create a Middle East 2.0, whose might and energy can power the region and perhaps the world to a much brighter future. A few years back, we instituted a new award, which we give every year at the summit, the Maimonides Award, which essentially celebrates great leadership in science, in leadership, and in menschlichkeit, or the art of being, you know, just a good person. This year, we had an incredible uh, awardee, uh, Dr. Ruth Arnon, Professor Ruth Arnon, uh, Professor of Biochemistry from the Weizmann, one of Israel's leading researchers in Capaxone, who at age 86 is still going strong. Let's watch this very moving ceremony where we awarded her this year's Maimonides Award. Professor Ruth Arnone is a professor of biochemistry at the Weizmann Institute, the former president of the Israel Academy of Sciences, co-developer of the multiple sclerosis drug Copaxone, and she's currently at age 86, if I can use your age, the active co-founder of a startup 
beyond vax, developing a universal flu vaccine. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the best of who we are, what we stand for, Professor Ruth Arnaud, please. Here's the award. much this event and this award. First of all, our crowd. It's a wonderful, wonderful organization supporting uh, high-tech industries and biotech in Israel. And I think that this is the most important step that we can do to go forward. Before we get to your questions, I just want to make some final comments, which I shared with the summit audience of how do we take all of this excitement that happened at the summit and move forward. Because really, uh, the summit was a, a good time, an important gathering, a milestone for our crowd, and I dare say for the Israeli ecosystem. Thousands of people in this difficult environment coming to Israel to show solidarity and to be part of our ecosystem, I thought, was just incredible. But we need to move forward. And what we're looking for is not just people to invest in. We're very, very obviously committed to that. We've never had more opportunities on the site live. I think at last I looked, it's 33 live funding opportunities. So please do go to the R Crowd uh, investment pages. If you're not you know, registered, then please go to rcrowd.com, register. If you are registered, check it out because the deal flow is pretty remarkable. But in addition to that, we'd love you to get your friends to sign up. We really want to grow our numbers. We're a little over 40,000 now, and we'd like to be 400,000, not next year. It's going to take a little longer, but we want to get this business much, much bigger, and we need your help in bringing your friends and your family and your contacts into our platform. We also want you to get involved with at least one company. And that could be either by joining their advisory board or helping them, but we want your impact, okay? Because when you uh, actually you know, sort of adopt a company, you're not only investing in it, but you're going to have an impact on its future success. Uh, we would be delighted if you would post information about the summit, either this uh, webinar itself or other clips that you can find on rcrowd.com or on our Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn pages. Please help us get the message out on social media. Send us your friends for jobs. We're always looking for people here at our crowd and our companies. We are a beast in terms of needing uh, you know, especially talented young people. Send us your kids as interns. Send us your relatives as engineers. Send us especially marketing and sales and content people. We need them all. And if you can find it in your heart to host an R Crowd event in your city, in your home, in your office, we'll be there. We'll bring part of this magic and excitement to you so that we can together spread the word and make sure that you mark your calendar for next year. Uh, it will be Thursday, March 4th, 2021. You got a whole year to plan, but definitely mark your calendar to be with us next year for the R Crowd Summit. 